Hello, hello, hello. Check, check, check. Working with code inside of After Effects opens up a whole new world of possibilities. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to constrain text within a box. And the way we're gonna do that is by using expressions. And this is something that is great for any types of names, which is why I use it quite often in sports because you can have a really long name and a really short name and you want it to fit in the same space. And you can make yourself crazy trying to adjust the text sizes. So we're gonna figure out how we can automate that process and make it as easy as possible to replicate it across any different team that you add into your text. So let's dive in and learn how to do this so you can add it to your repertoire and make your life easier. Now, I've gone ahead and set up this project. And when we get to the end, you can obviously see that the the names of the teams that I have picked are a little bit too long because even with the Seahawks here, we want a little bit of margin along the sides. We don't want it to go all the way out to the edge. So let's work on how to fix this. So let's go into our final lockup. And I've minimized this down so that you can just see some of the essentials here. But what I'm gonna do here is duplicate this away team nickname, which is the Seahawks. I'm gonna bring it up to the top here so that we can play around with it. And I'm gonna just turn off the expression that I have on that that's being driven by my team dropdowns over here. So if we start typing, it goes off the screen. And, and we obviously want this to stay on the screen. So let's first set up a box. This is the best way that I figured out how to do this so we can visualize what exactly is going on. So I have a red fill up here, which is fine because I'm gonna be over a blue background. So double click and it's gonna fill your screen here. When we go into our rectangle, rectangle path, we can adjust the size. So go ahead and unlink and we're gonna change this to say a thousand and let's go with 250. And that's gonna be pretty close to the height of the current text here. And I did go ahead and make sure that the text that I picked wasn't so large. Most teams will fit with this, with this text size, will fit within this box. So that's also something to keep in mind to make sure that you don't pick a font that is, that is huge for teams that have shorter names. And like, for instance, let's just do this real quick. For instance, if I have the lions here, if this text is huge and the Buccaneers needs to scale to fit, it's not gonna look that good. So do make sure that when you're doing this that you, you do evaluate the length of the text that you're gonna be using so that when you have shorter, shorter names that they don't look very different than the longer names. All right, so let's undo that. So my shape layer here is what I'm gonna be building my away team nickname off of. So let me go ahead and just move this up here so we can see this. All right, so we want Seahawks to fit within this box. So let's go ahead and hit S to pull up our scale. And I'm gonna alt click on the stopwatch to create an expression. So let me first start off by explaining that this is an array. So we need to return, at the end of this expression, we need to return an array. Anything that has a comma between it, and if I had this in 3D, it has three, I have to return three values in an array at the end as well. So you're, you wanna make sure that at the end of this, you have two numbers that will get returned here. So let's start off by typing in var for variable. We're defining a variable here, and it's gonna be x width. So we wanna define the max width of this text. And to do that, we're gonna pick whip down here to size. And when I let go, you're gonna see that in this expression now, I have, everything laid out. So let's talk through this. 
this comp, this comp, final lockup, is looking at the layer shape layer one, which is this shape layer name. And inside of that, I'm looking at the contents, rectangle one, and it's also looking at the rectangle one path. So the expression is basically walking down this layer saying, I want the shape layer, the contents inside of rectangle one, rectangle one path, and the size of zero. So in an array, we start with zero. So any X is zero, Y is one, and if there was a Z here, it'd be two. So position down here is X is zero, Y is one. So anytime you see something with a zero, one, or two inside of it, just know that zero is the first number. And I know that can be hard to wrap your head around, but that's how this works. So let's go ahead and copy this because our path is largely going to be the same here. Let's type var to establish a variable. And we're just making up these names, the x width and the y height. And if I paste and change this to one, that'd be the same as me, let me delete this part. That'd be the same as me pick whipping down to highlight that number, right? 250. All right, so we have that. Let me pull this down to give us a little bit more space. So now we need to define the width of the text here. So let's type in var x equals, we're gonna use x width divided by, and source rect at time is how we figure out the width of the text that we have here. As long as we type dot width here at the end. So source rect at time basically looks at the rectangle at the given time within the comp as the CTI goes through it. And then dot width is one of the standard operators. And then, and then for var y, we can do the y height and divided by the source rect at time. And another one is height. So as you can imagine, with the x width, we're calling out the rectangle, it's a thousand. And then this is looking at the width of our text which is actually larger than the width of the box. If I were to, let me just quickly return a value here. So let's just call this X comma Y because I'm returning an array here. X, Y is gonna go for X and Y. So if I click off, the text gets super, 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 super small. <laughs> you can see it there. So it returned 0.9 and 1.1. And the reason is because X width is actually not wider than the width of my text right now. So it's returning something less than one. So in order to get this back to the size that we want, we need to multiply this by 100. Both of them. All right, so let me refit this. And now you can see that if I adjust my shape layer here a touch, it fits snugly right inside this box. And it looks like I have a little bit of overhang on the left side. And I could go through and try and make sure I line that up using expressions, but as long as you get the general idea. Now you can see that it fits perfectly within this box. But the only problem is it's, it's a little stretched here in the Y, so we need to solve for that. Let's start a new line of code here and call out a new variable, call it min value. And again, that's a made up term. I'm just trying to help identify what I'm gonna be calling out here. So I want to find the minimum value between x width and the y height. So to do that, we need to do uh, math.min. And then I'm gonna put these two variables as my contents within that and add a semicolon at the end. And the semicolon at the end is essentially like a period at the end of a sentence. Make sure you include that 
so that it knows that you're terminating the end of that line. All right, so now that throws this off. So I need to, if I double click here, it's gonna highlight min value and I copy it. I can change out my X and I can just use this value for both of them. So what I'm saying here is that I want to find which one's gonna hit the side first. If X gets to a certain point and the text is still longer, it's gonna shrink the text down in Y. All right, so if I click off, you can see that my text goes back to the proper height. All right, so now it fix, fits within this box. But if I go to, let me go to my controller here, and I'm gonna lock this because this is what's driving the, the team names. If I change this to something like the Lions or the Jets, you're gonna see that the text fills the Y. Um, and it's it's going to be as large as the Y. So if I adjust my height here, say 200, my text is also going to shrink. And again, since I didn't set up these anchor points, uh, the shape is not sticking with the text like it like it could. All right, so let, I'm going to go back out of that and let's get the Seahawks back up here. All right. So now that we have this scale, I can right click and copy expression only. And this is something that I can now paste Move it down here. I could turn off my shape layer. I can paste it on the Buccaneers and that automatically updates. And the other thing that I want to point out because it's pivotal to making this work is notice where my anchor points are on the text. For the away team nickname, my anchor point is at the bottom here. If, say, I move this to the top and I adjust to the lions, see how it overlaps with other elements? So be mindful of that as you're creating your assets. Um, the Buccaneers home team name here is anchored to the top. So if, if anything gets scaled down, it doesn't go, it gets scaled down around the anchor point. So let me change my home team to something like the Lions. It gets larger away from the at sign. So I maintain this design up here around the ball. All right, so now we have our final lockup done. And as you notice here, as we go through we're also gonna have an issue with some of these city names. So let's go into our home team comp. And for scale, we can paste, just Command V to paste that in there. The issue is that we need to go grab the shape layer. So it has the shape layer to work off of as well. So once we paste that in there, it's gonna constrain this text name within those same shape layer limits that we had identified. And if I copy this and go into the away team and paste that, and then I go back in here, right click, copy expression only, and I, let me highlight this, paste the expression, it fills the screen a little bit more. And let's say that we didn't want this to scale up the text. Well, all we'd have to do is just go in here. If I hold Command or Control and click on the arrow here, it's gonna open everything up. And I can make this smaller. Maybe 200 is the size, the max size that I want it to be. Go into Home Team Comp and let's do the same thing. I want it to be 200. This one's not gonna move because it's already hit the X maximum here. So the Y isn't going to be adjusted. But if I go something like 150, then it'll, the Y is smaller. Once it hits the Y, it won't go any further out on, on X because it's already hit the minimum value, the lesser value. And then if we scale up, once it hits the X, it won't go any higher on the Y. So we set this to 200. And again, this is going to be different for every team. And 
on the final lockup, we can also do the same thing if we really wanted to. But I like the the how this is laid out right now. I think this is pretty pretty good. So if we go to the the matchup graphic here, we can click through. Let's find test out some other teams. So I think you get a general idea of how to adjust text to fit within a certain box and constrain it so it doesn't go beyond the proportions. <laughs>